Hello. <laughs> Well, first of all, I'll just tell you a bit about myself. Um, I grew up in Sydney, and um, and uh, as um, you just heard, I, I'm a COFA graduate that finished in 2008, and um, I've just been pretty much just, just painting to, since since finishing uni, um, just working towards a, a professional career in in, in painting, and um, and it's it's been quite a journey so far. I mean. Yeah. Um, so this is this is my painting New Tricks, which I did about about a year ago. Um, I, I work with a lot of old photographs, and um, that's where I get my subjects from. Just just from old photographs that I either find in my parents' albums at home, or I um, I find in op shops or online, and I I bought like. Over the over years, I, I bought you know massive bulk um, anonymous old photographs just online, and um, and um, so so yeah, the, the subjects that, that are in the photographs, I don't actually know them, and and I think that's that's quite interesting and, and quite intriguing. I mean, um, I really start to develop a relationship with with the person, even though I don't know them, and they and they have never known me. And um, possibly deceased, and you know, and having lived a long time ago, and um, yeah, but just just starting to get to know them through the process of painting them, and and just finding out, you know, how I can relate to a person that I don't know who has also walked on this earth and and done probably a lot of similar things to me, and and you know. Um, this particular photograph, um, I do know where it comes from. Um, I don't. I don't know the woman in it. This is. I've actually got a, a, a copy of of the original photograph. Which, if if you want to have a look, you're more than welcome to. Or maybe I should pass it around. Is that a, a study? Yeah. Um, it's just. I've just taken a small detail from from the original photograph of the woman's head, and um, the reason why I called it new tricks was because. She's actually bending down towards a small dog, you know, and, and I, I just I'd like to create a bit of a narrative around my paintings, and, and so I do try to see what I can find in the photograph, you know, and 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 give it a bit of that a bit of that um, story away through through the titles. Um, yeah, so so this photograph comes from Lysing, where my grandmother grew up. And um, and I went back there a couple of years ago with my family, and uh, my grandmother died um, a couple of years ago now. Um, I went back there, and one of my mother's really old friends just gave me a whole bunch of of old photographs from the area, and I just thought it was really interesting that I I don't know this woman, but she lived in in Lysing, which is a really tiny tiny village outside of Munich. And um, you know, it could even possibly be a great aunt, or it probably is, you know, a great aunt or a, a, a great grandmother. But you know, I'll never know. But um, but yeah, so so the uh, yeah, I use a lot of old photographs, and um, I also I like the way that um, just in the process of painting them, they're such small small images, and. They really, they, they're quite abstract, just just in looking at them. When you blow them up, like as I have done here, and if you, if you look at that that um, that image that I'm about, that, that's passing around, that's even a, a larger version of what the actual image is. You know, it's, it's very small, and so it, it's quite a simple um, how how uh, yeah, it's quite a simple image, but in blowing it up, it it, it, it becomes quite abstract. And so I use, a, um, I use a bit of a palette knife and brush in, in, in recreating the, the image. Um, first of all, I'll, I'll sketch, take some time in sketching out the, the, um, the image and then, and then slowly and build some legs up and, and slowly, you know, fill in the gaps kind of thing. I mean, sometimes it can be quite a quick process to, to, make, to make that final um, 
that final um, finish, but sometimes, you know, I can work back into it and, I mean, yeah, so, but I also really like using the palette knife because I think it's quite interesting in a way that it, it really creates the planes of the face and, and, and of, of, of the features of, of the face. And, um, but this is something that you can't really see in, in that tiny image. And so you're really creating the human again out, out of that tiny image. Um, what else? Um, yeah, and, um, and in using a lot of thick paint, which is in the style that I, that I, that I use, I just really enjoy the fact that um, the, paint, the paint kind of takes on a life of its own. And there's all these unexpected things that happen in, in you know, in using a lot of paint. It just kind of, you know, the way it drips or the way it just kind of tears through another part of the painting by accident. And, and yeah, so I, mean, I think it's a really interesting, interesting way of, of working. Um, and you can probably t see some of the influences from other artists that I have, just from this particular artwork. Um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Ben Quilty's. He's, um, yeah, he, he really um, has helped me in finding a, a style and, and, and things like that. Um, I mean, I have a lot of other influences as well. I mean, um, I've worked, I mean, I've, over, since, since finishing uni, I, um, I went through, I basically went for three or four years, I was just going through so many art movements and so many, you know, different artists that I really liked, I'm just trying to find my own particular style. And, um, but, and been, you know, really quite, quite obviously copying a lot of, a lot of our other artists like Van Gogh, David Hockney, um, Bonnard, just, so, and they're all so varied and all so different. But by, in doing so, I think um, it's, it's made me competent painter that I am now because you know I've learned so much in, in doing in doing that and um, and yeah yeah so what else um, yeah so I was I was living in Stanmore Park up until this weekend I'm just moving out this weekend back to Sydney but I was living in Stanmore Park for um, four years since I finished uni and I was I just think that that time I'm just being quite reflective on it now because I'm about to leave um, um, I think that time really helped me in, in, in finding out what I wanted to paint and how I wanted to paint it. Because when I finished uni, I, I really struggled with finding an identity in, in, in what I just knew that I wanted to paint. And you know, I, I wasn't sure how I wanted to go about that. And so just going through um, so many different styles, yeah. I think it's been a really important journey. And um, so this is, this, I mean, the Mossman Art Prize is kind of really marking a point in time for me now. Um, this is kind of a bit of a turning point in, 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 in my life at the moment. Um, it's just kind of cemented the fact that I can, that I can do this and what I'm doing is, is right. And <laughs> yeah, but this is, I mean, I'm, I'm just a young artist, so, yeah, it's just a, bit, a, a small part of a, a big journey, I think. Um, but yeah, I mean, as I was saying, art prizes, I mean, I think art prizes, especially this Mossman Art Prize with the Emerging Artist Award, is so important for, for um, young artists because it really, well, it's been really important to me, art prizes, because, I mean, the art world is a big world that a lot of us don't really understand just coming out of uni and, you know, not really, we don't really know where to start. And I think having, and having art prizes and working towards a goal and, you know, just having a bit of a deadline, just a bit of a kick up the bum to, to get yourself going <coughs> is a really good thing. Um, so so they've, they've played a big role in, in where I am today. Um, yeah, so, but in, in terms of being an emerging artist, um, and, and I'm my, 
career um, and these turning points at the moment. Um, yeah, so I've, I've recently been been represented by a woman called Kate Smith, and that's been a really a really massive thing for me. So these these last couple of months have just been really big, and um, but um, but yeah, no, it's very exciting. And <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, has anyone got any questions for Clara? With the colour? Yes. Did, did that just sort of evolve intuitively or did you actually think in terms of... Could you repeat the, the question when you were on it? Um, um, David, you was just asking about the colour and, and, and if I did it, was it intuitive or, or, or was it all completely planned? I mean, yeah, I mean, generally I'll, I'll start with... I mean, I'm working from black and white, so generally my colours in my paintings are quite muted. Um, yeah, uh, but I mean, generally I'll start with an idea of two base colours and then just see how that evolves. So it is, it is a, a lot of intuition, but then, yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just uh, going to ask you, yeah. I, I saw Ben Quilty's winning uh, Redlands Westpac uh, mm -hmm. prize entry yesterday mm -hmm. um, and he said he painted a picture of his father in it was almost a matter of hours, you know, he knew yeah. the subject obviously very well. I was wondering um, how long it would take you to do kind of um, Well, I mean, yeah, it was quite a while ago, so I can't, I think it was over a couple of days, but I do do a lot of sketches beforehand, so I mean, it's really... I can't really tell you in an hours how many, how many hours I spend on it, but um, but um, yeah, so a couple of days, and, and I mean, a, a, the whole process. There's a big process in kind of deciding on a particular photograph and finding that photograph, and and how I'm going to execute execute it. It's not just putting down lines on the canvas and then suddenly there's a painting. Um, yeah, it's just a, it's quite a long process, but uh, but I mean yeah, at the same time, um, putting the paint down that can be be quite quick as well. So, and and I think in that quick um, in the quick movements, you know, a lot comes out of the painting. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you think moving to Sydney is going to in any way alter the type of paintings that you do? Um, I'm not sure. I have to see. But, um, but I just feel like um, it's time that I move back to the city and be... Because I think, as I was saying, down, being away from the city was really important to, um, to really hone in. Just, just build up the painting miles and, and, and really just concentrate on painting and not be distracted by anything else. But now that I think I've really found a style that I really believe in and that, that uh, well, I can identify with, um, I, I, I hope, I hope not. <laughs> I mean, but you never know. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, you never know what's going to happen in the future. Yeah. Hi, Clara. Hi. Congratulations. Thank you. And when it comes to using a lot of photographs, what about when you're using painting? Do you paint also a lot of white? Well? Yeah, I mean, I, I do a lot of painting of Simon, my boyfriend, who's up at that. Um, he's kind of, he's probably a bit sick of me painting him. <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, I do do a lot of um, life painting and and um, or, I mean painting of people who are alive as well, you know, not not just people in old photographs. But um, but uh, yeah, I mean I do work on a lot of portraits as well. Yeah, and I, and the way I do that is kind of I'll work on lots of different ones and then and then slowly work my way up to the final piece. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of a different process again, yeah. What's the best piece of advice for other artists to give? Oh. Can you repeat the question? Oh, sorry, the um, best piece of advice that another artist has given me. Um, uh, just listen to yourself and just be honest with yourself, I think, and, and stay true to yourself. I mean, that might sound cliche, but yeah, it's the truth. <laughs>